Is this being taped too? Yes. Yep. Yeah, so we have these uh, sort of catch-all mics around. And Dan, do you want to see if that wire extends? Unless you want to see it. of October 1st, 2018, to the town of Scarborough. Um, Doreen, could you please call the roll? Corey Fellows? Yeah. Here. Nick McGee? Here. Joel Simons? Roger Beely? Here. Robin Saunders? Rachel Hendrickson? Here. And Richard Du Perry? All right, thank you. We, with the record show, we do have a quorum here. Um, let's see if anyone else joins. Um, our sole action item this evening is Crossroads Holdings LLC, which has submitted an application for the master plan phase of the plan development review process for phase two of the Scarborough Downs property. And Jamel's going to introduce this one for us. All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so, as as the board may recall, based on the board's review of the site inventory and analysis a few planning board meetings ago for phase two, the applicant has submitted a preliminary conceptual master plan uh, for phase two of the Scarborough Downs development. Uh, this portion of land is located on the northerly portion of the property adjacent to Payne Road. Uh, so the applicant received approval for the conceptual infrastructure plan for the entire Downs property, as you may recall, back in January of this year. And tonight's discussion will focus on the phase two portion of the Downs property. Uh, just as a reminder, the conceptual master plan is intended, intended to lay out how the plan development will be developed, including uh, the proposed use of various parts of the site, the primary road and pedestrian network, primary util utility network, the overall approach to stormwater management, proposed development in open space areas, the proposed buffer areas, and the proposed development standards that will apply to the development proposals going forward. So tonight's review will be more of a high-level discussion with the applicant about the general layout of the Phase 2 development. Uh, based on staff's review, there appears to be several, several separate development areas which may, may be considered uh, for distinct standards going forward. The first distinct area includes the commercial retail anchor area, which will serve as the gateway into the downs from the north. The second distinct area is located on the most easterly portion of the property and is identified as the light industrial areas, which are more remote to the overall development pattern and scheme. And finally, the third distinct area includes the light industrial anchor and light industrial lots located west of the street identified as Street B currently. So the applicant has indicated that they are currently working on developing specific standards for the Phase 2 development and will be providing these with future master plan submissions. So tonight, the board should be sure to discuss these distinct development areas on the property and the distinct standards they expect to see, as this will help inform the applicant as they work through uh, the specific development standards. So staff has provided a host of review comments to the board and the applicant in prepar preparation for tonight's workshop. But at this point, I'll turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And I'll just briefly note that um, we did something we took a similar approach with phase one for Crossroads earlier this year, sort of breaking it out into a work, more of a workshop format. It's still a public meeting, but in more of a workshop format so that we can really drill down on some of these things and um, found that it's a sort of a, a productive way to be able to, to address that and sort of keep things moving without occupying a, a significant chunk of a regular planning board agenda. Um, and uh, we will have the opportunity for public comment, but. Um, 
for that, I will turn over to the applicants team for their presentation. Okay. I'm going to hop up and do a quick presentation, but I want to thank the board for taking the time to have a workshop format. It's a, it's a unique project. It's a unique process. Um, and so we really appreciate the opportunity to kind of have this more informal discussion without other agenda items right before or after us. So, so thanks for that. <coughs> so I'm going to walk through a presentation, but again, since it's a workshop, please, please stop me. Um, we can talk about um, any aspect of each slide, and we want, want this to be interactive. So um, I'll, I'll get going, uh, but, but please uh, interrupt as the presentation unfolds. Um, as Jamel introduced, uh, we're looking at a master plan for a portion of the down. It's actually the, the other end of the project than what the board's been looking at and reviewing recently down uh, along Route 1 being the residential uh, Phase 1. This is the area up by Payne Road, and I know everybody, the planning board knows where the down is um, and in the context of it, but we just wanted to highlight um, the, the overall parcel boundary and we're talking about the area that's really close to Payne Road uh, across from the Holmes Road intersection. It has great access to, to Payne but also of course I-95 and, um, and exit 42. This area of the property um, we've called the, or calling the Innovation District and, and we can talk about that in a more detail later um, but it's 133 acre area of, of the Downs property. This shows it in the context of the overall master plan for the project. And this is a evolutionary master plan for the project because we've only um, gotten review for phase one and now master plan for uh, this innovation district, which would be the second phase. And that's per the ordinance where the, the planning board looks at because of the size of this parcel, the planning board looks at 50 acre chunks or larger. Um, that first phase was around 50 acres. This one's 133 um, to 148. We'll talk about that. Additional 15 acres in a second. Um, and we've laid it out to interconnect with what we think will be the master plan for the, for the balance of the property. But the, the core and the area around the Haggis Parkway, that's to be determined and to be reviewed by the planning board at, at future master plan uh, steps when we get to those areas. So the, the project team's goals for this innovation district um, are really to establish an economic development area for the downs and, and for the town. Uh, this is an area that uh, we see a mix of destination retail and some commercial uh, taking advantage of the corner of the Downs Road and, and Payne Road, giving its, given its visibility, given its location between Cabela's um, Shopping Center, Exit 42, and all the development activity and commercial activity um, up by Gorham Road, <coughs> Road and up to the main Mall. We also see uh, this, this district and this area being a significant light industrial manufacturing hub for the community. Um, so the balance of of this area, um, really to the center and to the into the east of what you're looking at, is going to be that light industrial manufacturing, research, um, food and beverage production, all those types of light industrial uses that there's really no space for in the town of Scarborough and really in Greater Portland. So in Greater Portland, there's just over a one percent sort of vacancy rate for that type of space. Scarborough is similar and is built out uh, really in terms of industrial and industrial land. So we see this as a great opportunity for, for the project and for the town to, to um, provide space that's, that's very much in need. And we see it as a, an equality employment location um, with a great ROI for the community. Um, the Downs has been focused on having a, the right balance and the right mix of development activity and so our phase one was heavy on residential. Our phase two is planned to be very heavy on light industrial commercial that um, can be a significant tax revenue generated for the community and also have uh, great employment opportunities. Um, and as we've laid out this uh, innovation district, um, 
we've laid it out with, with an eye towards a modern employment area. We don't want to just lay out a 70s or 80s style industrial park. This is a, um, a commercial area that we see as being kind of the next generation of light industrial space. Um, it's going to have a mix of commercial uh, on the corner there. It's also going to be very close to, uh, we hope, will be a, a great mixed-use project to the south, uh, potentially a downtown. Obviously, a lot of residential development um, that can provide housing for employment here. Um, and, and also a, a strong connection to the open spaces that are around this site. Um, there's significant uh, land trust property to the east, um, and there's significant open spaces planned just in this master plan phase uh, that can be amenities for employers, uh, employees, and, and for the project. In terms of our design uh, approach and, and the character of this area, as uh, Jamel introduced, we want this to be an attractive gateway into the project um, and see the, the Payne Road intersection uh, with the Downs Road being kind of remade into a to more of a boulevard um, to be well landscaped and to have commercial development on the corner that um, is attractive and, and relates well to, to the corner and is, and is a really um, attractive gateway into the project. So we see that corner 20 or so acres being that, uh, being sort of destination retail or commercial. Um, exploring possible users at this time at that corner. And then we see to, to the east where uh, the image goes from, or the <coughs> lots go from that more kind of pinkish red to the, to the tan or beige, um, that to be that light industrial manufacturing um, park in the area. In terms of transportation, um, Obviously, there's going to be a fair amount of cars and trucks that go to this site, but we also see this being modern in terms of being multimodal. We think transit's going to be a key piece of attracting employers here, serving um, employees, and, and really serving the project. And we think with phase one coming online this year um, and really into the next, and with this employment hub, we think transit's going to serve this project well and are anticipating that being a key amenity. We also are laying out the roads to be very kind of bikeable and walkable. Um, and even though it's more of a kind of a light industrial space, uh, with the connectivity to the rest of the project and to uses within this particular phase, we think it's important to set the tone with kind of robust sidewalks and, and bike lanes, much like we were doing on the Downs Road in phase one. Um, we want it to be planned and attractive in a, a comfortable space, um, and we're looking at how buildings address the street, which we're going to talk a little bit about tonight and then come back to the board with more details um, at your next meeting. And we're planning for this, this area to be kind of really buffered um, so that the light industrial doesn't impact uh, adjacent properties like Warren Woods, um, like residential development within the project um, to the south, but also be well connected. So we're going to have the trails connect to other phases of the project and connect to Warren Woods so that um, our buffers are really an extension of the Warren Woods land trust property. That same would be true with these open space connections to establish um, open spaces within this phase of the project that ultimately will tie into the open spaces within the rest of the master plan as that evolves and also tie into the Warren Woods property and uh, town property uh, nearby. And then lastly, and like I mentioned earlier, we want this to be a more of a modern setting, um, a, an attractive place for employers and, and really a, a place that uh, users in the region or from out of the region want to be in uh, and look at so, so at your last meeting in August, uh, we presented the site inventory analysis. This is just a quick slide of the balance of wetlands and uplands that exist um, in the area. So the green are the wetland areas and the yellow are the uplands. Um, since that time, um, the team has put under contract an, an additional 15-acre parcel that's primarily um, wetlands. 
that the next slides and in, in, in master plan will show, um, but that actually <coughs> increases the amount of wetlands on the site. So within the, uh, within the district, there is approximately 30 acres of wetlands. So if you add that additional parcel, that goes up to around 43 acres. And there's right now approximately 103 acres of upland. Uh, there's not much upland to add on that additional parcel. And this is the site inventory, or excuse me, the site analysis that we presented uh, back in August that <coughs> shows a lot of different uh, features and characteristics, but it's really trying to illustrate, you know, um, the way the, the land drains, the potential for road connections and um, focal points within the, the development area. Um, and potential to, sort of general connections with the abutting properties, particularly the land trust property. And so we use this as we uh, put together the, the master plan reviewing this evening. So this is the conceptual master plan we submitted to the board. Um, and it's showing, like I mentioned earlier, um, a commercial kind of retail focused 18 to 20 acre parcel out on the corner of the Downs Road and Penn Road. And then just to the southeast of that parcel, proposing a new light industrial uh, innovation way, so access road that would come into um, the light industrial area and then, uh, and then head to the east. And then there, there would be a, a road uh, teeing off from that that would connect into future phases of the Downs. And the, the road alignment has been designed deliberately to leave adequate land um, for development on the corner, but also cross the wetlands that exist um, close to the Downs Road at their narrowest places. So we're minimizing our wetland impact by this road alignment heading kind of west to east and vice versa, connecting larger uplands for light industrial development and really creating this framework for um, light industrial development that's that's pretty flexible. We've laid this out intentionally to allow for generally acre of lots for uh, light industrial manufacturing <coughs> users, but also the ability to merge lots for larger users that come along based on interest in, in the development. And so this spine of roadway uh, would be a public road, and then these side access access ways or alleyways would be privately owned and maintained and shared. So they would provide access to um, each lot, particularly the back lots. So there's, this is anticipating there's frontage locks along the main road and the public road. And then there would be back lots um, that would be accessed via the, um, the shared access ways. Within those, there's also going to be all the utilities that serve each lot. Um, in addition to that, this subdivision and this layout has been designed to be served by common stormwater facilities. So those lighter green areas are the areas proposed for large stormwater ponds that would, would manage the stormwater for all the individual lots uh, within the light industrial innovation district. And then there would be uh, obviously drain lines that, that tie to those stormwater ponds. Um, in terms of the open spaces and wetland conservation, so what you're seeing in the darker green um, are, are more or less the areas we're proposing to conserve as wetlands. Um, either uh, the smaller wetland areas would be on individual lots, the larger tracks would be within open space that would be owned and managed by the overall uh, master association for the project. The, um, most sort of easterly square that projects towards Warren Woods, um, that green boundary is the 100-foot buffer that's required um, to abutting residential districts. So the slight industrial area is going to have a 100-foot no disturb buffer or greater um, to the properties to, to the north and east, um, which are primarily the Warren Woods property. Um, there's some other residential zone property just to the to the south of where it projects out um, to the east. Uh, 
Another requirement of the master planning process is to lay out a preliminary infrastructure plan for uh, this aspect of the project. Um, this shows that where currently on Payne Road, there's, um, there's only public water and there's electricity. There's not sewer uh, along Payne Road. So coming in from Payne Road, there'll be a water line. Um, there'll, be, uh, there'll be power and other uh, communication uh, utilities. There will be, but in terms of sewer and uh, fiber optics, et cetera, those are actually going to be coming up from Angus Parkway. So that's off of the plan that you see. It, they'll be coming up that that um, light industrial road from the south and then serve the, the project in that way uh, and run within the, the proposed new public roads. Um, and we're continuing to work with the Portland Water District on the specifics of this in terms of what they want to see in terms of uh, a water network. So we're not clear on whether there's going to be a water line within the Downs Road that you see kind of cutting coming from Payne Road down on an angle. Um, since there's not development that's proposed along it, given that there's wetlands on both sides, that may or may not be the case. But we're, we'll update the town as that um, process unfolds with the public Portland Water District. Also on this plan, you see in, in the lighter blue are those common stormwater ponds that we anticipate installing for the project overall. This plan is uh, the open space plan for this part of the project. Uh, it also shows um, really kind of our neighborhood mitigation plan, if you will, in terms of how the project's going to be uh, providing a buffer to the neighboring properties. So in the, in the brown is what we anticipate as being um, the wetland areas that would remain um, and, and not be impacted. Much of that will be in the form of, of common open space. The, um, the, the darker green on the border of, of this phase um, is that 100 foot buffer to uh, adjacent properties, particularly residentially zoned properties in Warren Woods. And we see these open space areas as really being uh, an extension of Warren Woods in terms of the land trust properties and supplementing that. And um, we anticipate trails as being a big component of the project and trying to plan our trail system with, with the land trust so there can be interconnections so that the land trust the property can be <coughs> extended into ours and vice versa. This plan shows the really kind of the connectivity in terms of pedestrians and, and transit. I mentioned that earlier where we see this over time being served by transit, establishing a couple bus stops that then, um, then riders and pedestrians can use. So this is showing where maybe bus stops occur um, and, and then the pedestrian network that can be taken from there. So we anticipate sidewalks and then connections to those trails and bike lanes that are part of the street infrastructure as well as the, um, the, the private accesses to each lot. In terms of that infrastructure, um, we have three different street sections, if you will, to give you a sense of what we envision for um, the streets within the project. At the Gateways Inn, uh, we anticipate um, some medians, some center landscaped island treatment similar to our phase one as gateway treatment as you come in off of Payne Road and you come in from future phases of the project um, where you have a center island, uh, you have 11 foot travel lanes, um, five foot shoulders or bike lanes. Again, that's a, this is the same cross section as the Downs Road in phase one. Um, and then sidewalks with, with Esplanade. On Street A, so Street A is what we're anticipating being the light industrial street or the innovation way. Uh, we anticipated similar treatment, no, uh, no center island, um, but 11 foot travel lanes, five foot shoulders, bike lanes, and we anticipate uh, a sidewalk on one side. 
given the nature of the light industrial industrial zone and layout. And this is what we see for these these shared alleys or access ways. Um, and these would provide access to four to six lots. Um, so two lots that are along the, the public street. And then in some cases it's two back lots, in some cases it's four back lots. And we think uh, a 24 foot wide street or driveway um, is in order here. And then a pedestrian connection from, from the public street to the light industrial users. And this gives a sense for you know, how private parking could occur uh, along these access drives. So this is just, uh, again, the showing the, the master plan and um, giving you a sense for, for where those streets are. So the, the Downs Road would be that street uh, cross section A, and then cross section A would be the entrances within the, the light industrial road, both off of the Downs Road and off of the roads, future roads coming in from the, the rest of the project. and then. Uh, that street section B would be the majority of Innovation Way. Um, and then that street section or driveway section C would be those access ways. <coughs> so in terms of the layout of these lots um, in the light industrial, the light industrial park, there's a couple key things that we wanted to highlight in terms of kind of the method to the madness to this layout. Um, it's a, the site is, from a development standpoint, I guess, the last, more or less, with a being very flat. Um, so it actually can enable a grid layout. It can enable pretty kind of uniform, predictable development. And it provides a lot of flexibility. So it enabled um, us to lay out a grid where there can be 40 to 45 uh, light industrial lots that are about an acre in size. Um, and we've laid them out in a way, in a very uniform way, um, that are generally 200 by 200 to create that acre. Um, and we've laid them out in a way that they can uh, be sized for a 10 to 15,000 square foot user, which is what would fit uh, reasonably on an acre lot when you include the building footprint and, and the parking. Or, they, or a user could come along and they could buy two lots and they could create a 30 to 45,000 square foot building and parking. Or if they could acquire four lots and, and you know, establish maybe an 80 to a 100,000 square foot building. So there's a lot of kind of flexibility and uh, elasticity to this layout. And it's, it's by design to, ha to, to accommodate the wide range of users that are likely here. Our market analysts and our, our brokers say that there's high demand for those, those 10 to 15,000 square foot users, but um, we also have some larger users that, again, could acquire a couple lots and fit within the project and fit within design without coming back to the planning board for, for amendments. Another component of this is it's a very feasible um, project where uh, the road can be built out to a certain point, say a third of the way in, um, and a turnaround can be established and um, the lots developed. And then when there's market demand, it can be extended further um, out to the end or another block or two. In addition to that, um, with the common stormwater ponds and common utilities, there can be a higher floor area ratio for light industrial lots. This is key in that rather than each lot having to provide stormwater treatment and take up space with a stormwater pond, each lot having to figure out utilities and where they go, each lot having a separate driveway coming in for access, this design is all laid out so that um, it's predictable and also can to maximize the building size and the, and the utility of each lot and then handle the infrastructure in common rather than on each lot. It also provides a lot of flexibility, excuse me, predictability for the planning board where the curb cuts are set up in advance. So at each of these four-way intersections, 
it's anticipated that each lot will use the, the shared access to get to each lot um, and not have to figure out curb cuts as the project goes. I think that's what I wanted to cover on that one. Um, similarly, this uh, efficient design reduces in area. Yeah. Can you go back a minute to the curb cuts? Uh, I'm looking at that. How? Um, so the the first two lots fronting on uh, Street A, their curb would come in the their their cut would come in the second two lots. Is that what you're saying? This one's easier to point to. Um, so these two lots would use the shared access to get into their site rather than establishing curb cuts off of okay. off of the main road, and then. The shared access would also provide access to, to these four lots as well. So, but I, I'm just looking at the the, the cross street. Is that no uh, up not cross street, but the access up here? Yeah, is that then supposed to be the curb cuts for those lots? These are shown as turnarounds um, conceptually. So. Someone come in and that, that also could be a curb cut. Um, you know, this is going to be less predictable in terms of when the curb cuts go on the private access because that's going to depend on where the building's located, how big the parking lot is, um, the site layout. But in terms of the public street, the curb cuts are going to be very predictable and occur at these four way intersections which provide access to the, to the shared. Okay, and so those intersections are really alleys. So those are the. These are creating access to alleys. Yep. Yeah, so these oh, okay. are going to be private. This is going to be the public street. Okay, so we're really, so I guess I'm not looking at the alleys as the curb cuts, and you were. So now I understand. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah. yeah now, 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 I, the, now I understand. Curb cut so, on the public street is going to be very predictable. Okay. These will be less predictable. Only based on. The programming of each of each site. Okay. Um, right now, right now, there's going to be no curb cuts on Innovation Way. The curb cuts are going to be like, at the, at the are, are part of the alleys. That's the intent. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, what about the ones except for these lots over here that can't benefit? They don't right. Alleys. And what about the one down below there? Uh, that yeah. Just to your, move your finger to you. Go back a bit. So right here, this this thing here, this section. Here. We this need, yeah. these two lines will have access off of <clears throat> this shared driveway. Um, this one is likely to have access. We need to figure out access to this yeah. rear lot. We didn't lay that out yet. What uh, what are those? Uh, are those uh, little streams running through there? What are, what are those things? This is a. This shows the wetland area. And the same thing up there in the. Uh, yeah, these are. Don't aim it at his eye. What? Don't aim it at his eye. It's right. <laughs> <laughs> Can I shoot down a plane? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. My point is, are those <laughs> like little streams? No, uh, these are. This is the outline of the existing wetlands. Oh, okay. And then but they're showing a potential buffer to them. This, we didn't show those as green because we anticipate some of those could be impacted by development, yeah. and we don't anticipate wetlands and green being impacted by development. Okay. And what about that other little um, light green portion that's kind of dipping this down there as you're going in from, yeah, this. that one there. Would, no, no, the, the little, this, so, yeah, what do you, what this you envision there? Here we envision to be a development, a long and narrow development lot, but these are buffers to wetlands, uh, flanked by buffers to wetlands. Oh, okay. Each side. So on that, that first alley that um, Rachel was talking about, mm -hmm. I presume that that turnaround, that first turnaround will cease to exist if, once you go further to extend the road there, right? We anticipate the turnarounds also will become part of the site development of each lot. Okay. So, but just wide enough so that they can function and turn around with trucks and cars. So that's the, you know, these will get filled in with driveways that you can circulate around buildings. Um, 
Um, we'll just show this for illustrative purposes. Um, and then within these alleys will be the, all the utilities underground that then will be parked over, say, for stormwater, over the stormwater pond, uh, vice versa. There's also some potential for interconnections between, between sites where it makes sense for their design. Uh, it won't always be the case, but in many cases, there could be, you know, parking lot right next to a parking lot, and they may interconnect those. Uh, we've looked at concepts with interconnections and without. So the plan right now is for Innovation Way to basically appear as it is right there, unless some some you know business comes in and wants to do something that may change the design of it. Well, that's why we we've, we've tried to avoid that by laying out these lines to be flexible and to be purchased by, you know, you can buy three in a row. If they have a long, narrow building and uh, same with parking, they could acquire three and not have to change the design other than eliminating two lot lines. Uh, similarly, like this light industrial anchor we haven't talked about, there's a user that's uh, very interested and this has been sized to accommodate their needs. Um, and, you know, it's essentially a little bit more than six lots. Um, so that gives it something like this, if it made sense, could occur here. Um, if, and then the road stays in the same place, you just eliminate the shared access because it's unnecessary. It's not, there's only one access point. Mm -hmm. so Dan, where's the, where's, the, um, where's the access onto the lot for that light industrial yeah. anchor that you've just referenced. Um, we anticipate it could be here, or it could be here. Uh, we haven't nailed down the final site plan for the anchor, uh, but we would either offset, we would try to offset it with a driveway across the street. That's why I mentioned it here and here. So we've had, if I could jump in, yeah. um, you know, we've got somebody, we've had somebody in mind for this, we've got somebody in mind for here. We haven't really shown you a lot of detail on the subdivision plan because we don't feel like we're, we're quite there yet. But this is this is kind of a concept. So um, this roadway, we've we're pretty confident that we're in the right place here because it, we're weaving it in amongst the wetland and trying to do as you know as little impact as we can. It gives us some development area here, some development area in here, and then the lots start to take on more of a traditional layout, if you will. Here, again, we've got somebody in mind, and then we tried to size these lots so that we could put lots together if we have to. You know, we know we can do a 10 to 15,000 square foot building on each one of these little 200 by 200 squares. So those should fit with typical parking. You know, if we get somebody that needs more parking or we get a, somebody that needs a bigger building, we can kind of put these things together. Um, this road system really should be right. It, 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 it feels right. This road should be right. These are in the right place. It's just a matter of, you know, how long will it have to be? Well, if, you know, if somebody wants to have all of this, it may not have to go all, all the way. So but that's why these would be private. Um, you know, there'd be an association that would maintain that. Um, this would be public. So just trying to build in as much flexibility after working with our brokers and really looking at what the market has available to us. Um, we think we've come up with a, a plan that, that really can work and allow us some some flexibility. Yeah, Rocky, you said they're going to be private. I'm looking at the the, uh, the potential trails, which are coming pretty pretty darn close to the end of those lots. Is there any any thought to having the trails have access to those those lots there we have you, to the to the alleyways? There's, yeah. there's thoughts about it for sure. We know for sure we want to get some access here. Um, in fact, we've talked with the land trust about having actually some parking that, that the public could park right there off the public way and get access to um, their trail system. And we, you know, we haven't got this piece figured out, but access certainly is, is going to be important. Uh, Dan, I want to jump in. Yeah. You didn't mention this piece, and were you coming back to that? Or we can talk about it right now, though. Okay. If I could, before we jump to that bit, just sort of talking about the the private ways and potential for interconnections, as the board, you know, recognizes going through this process. One of the one of the 
components to a master plan or plan development master plan is looking at interconnections uh, of street network. And part of the discussion that the applicants had in their narrative and we've had with the applicant staff has had the benefit of is understanding that the, you know, the flexibility of, of the design for these sort of 200 by 200 lots and not necessarily knowing what the future build out is exactly going to be, but at least providing for the opportunities. Um, and I think that's where in our staff comments we really talked about, you know, maybe in terms of, you know, the, there's a little tabs at the, you know, um, shown with potential connections. Um, you know, maybe just really thinking about cross easements being provided for so that when site plans come along, that that's when you can start to articulate and define what those shared driveways might be, what those shared parking lots might look like or not. It all going to be dependent, but um, so maybe that's one way of approaching sort of that design standard that's talked about without necessarily having to map it all out where the future might be unknown um, given the users. So just something for the board and to think about. I think it would help market it too, create a menu of options mm -hmm. for various setups, mm -hmm. deeds and so on would yeah. really help. Unique as well. Okay. So I'll head on that one if you want to talk about that other so, other piece there. When we originally <coughs> bought the downs, we thought <coughs> we were going to buy whether we would own this piece. After the survey was done, I remember we talked about this with council and in with the planning board, mm -hmm. I think, so it may be familiar to you folks. After the survey got done, we found that this really was the lot line down here. And in fact, the lot line went out, and this was ours, and not this. We since have put this piece on the contract to purchase. We know it's mostly wetland. I think, Rich, there's a hunk of upland right here, I think. There's two, yeah, two islands, up, two islands in the middle there. A couple of islands of, of upland, but it's mostly wetland. Um, it's about 15 acres in size, and we've got it under contract. We're actually, in fact, I think we're going to be on an agenda with the planning board to, to, uh, yep. yeah, to discuss that. Um, so, you know, we want to turn this. So this was Crossroads. We recognized we didn't own it. It came out of the Crossroads zone. We need to put it back into the Crossroads zone now. So that we're going to be moving through that process, and you know we're on your agenda, but that's going to allow us to buffer off. Um, it allows us to push our what would have been a hundred foot buffer, push it out to the property line, but it, it gains all of this as uh, as wetland as part of part of the project. So where is Warren Woods? Warren Woods is all that's this the land okay. here. Okay, and what's, all what's here. to the north? And it comes yeah. down here. Right now, right up, right above this, this here. Woods, right here. So this is all Warren Woods. Oh, that's all. Okay. All up here, <coughs> down here, and it wraps down around us. Okay. Out here. So, a quick question about the uh, the notch kind of in that corner there. Is that uh, butter encroaching on your property line? I mean, you can't tell from the overlay. Up so, here? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, they did. They did. Um, and it got there was a dispute back in the early 2000s, I guess, um, and it got mostly settled. Uh, but they, they were clearly over the, over the line at one time. They're pretty much all back over the line now, back to where they belong. But when you Google Earth that, you can, you can see it's, it was a pretty good encroachment. I jumped into your presentation. No, Sorry. Um, <coughs> can't help myself. I'm not sure if we had a whole lot more to cover. <coughs> so what else we had to cover is the things that we didn't include in this packet. Um, as Jamal introduced, we've provided a lot of the information required of the master plan, <coughs> but we still have more work to do on kind of two key aspects. Um, one is the the proposed space and bulk requirements for uh, for this area of the project. Like as you learned and, and know, phase one, this zone um, requires and enables through cooperation with the planning board. We lay out the master plan, and then we figure out what's the right what's the right space and bulk. What are the right front setbacks? Um, what are the right side and rear setbacks? Uh, what are the right frontage requirements or, or not having frontage requirements? So we thought. Um, 
presenting this to you in, in two, two bites or two parts made sense where we, we show you the master plan, you, we explain the, the lot layouts and the flexibility and what we're trying to achieve with it um, and get your, your input and, and hopefully your, your support. And then we can go back and work with staff on, okay, what are the right space and bulk requirements that can, uh, that can work with this layout. So that's one piece we want to come back to the board with. And the second piece is um, around building and site design guidelines. Um, when we worked with the council and, and the planning, and you as the planning board back in the spring to add these kind of light industrial manufacturing uses to the zone um, in this specific area, there was discussion around uh, design standards and, and whether or not they're uh, this area should be subject to the commercial design standards that the, that the, um, the town and the planning board enforce, where industrial districts aren't required um, to comply with the commercial design standards. Um, and this is a light industrial, kind of somewhere in between industrial and commercial. Uh, the final agreement was that, and the zoning says, that the commercial design standards don't apply to these light industrial uses. but. In that conversation, we said we'd come up with some design guidelines that made sense for this light industrial area that are something um, something different than the commercial design standards that are set up for light industrial and manufacturing type uses, but are attractive, um, but are also practical. So we're still working on that. Um, and we thought it made sense to bring those two items back to you as a package in a separate conversation because um, they relate to each other. You know, we're, how close are buildings to the street? What do they look like? Um, and we'd come back at, um, in the next month or month and a half with that um, and then get your review uh, at that time. But after we've gotten good direction on this master plan layout. Dan, I got a few questions. I'm dying to use this one. <laughs> um, this area right here. Yep. Uh, so, this is light industrial, and this is commercial and retail. And what this could be a mix of both, or is that what is that? We see these as more light industrial than okay. we do commercial. Um, yeah. The zone doesn't uh, prohibit commercial or residential in this whole area. So yeah. just to kind of be clear on uses, in the zoning, the light industrial, the manufacturing, the contractor space, etc., is only allowed in this part of the project. The rest of the project isn't allowed to have those more industrial type uses. Okay. But this area of the project can have commercial residential yeah, things that are allowed. To I didn't know if that was like a transition area because the colors are, you know, it, it's it's obviously like a light industrial color, mm -hmm. but then you've got this color here and this color here. And then I was kind of envisioning maybe, I don't know what I was, I was thinking, if that was going to be condos or, or, or people that, or if we're going to. So you don't know exactly what you're going to do with that right now. And that's fine. I just didn't know if you had a. Well, I think we, we haven't shown you lots laid out in there because right. we really haven't. But we've got to work. You know, we're going to work around wetlands there. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it'll, it will still be in that vein of light industrial type okay. type use. Um, certainly not as traditional as you know the blocks we've got over here. We've just got right. wetlands to deal with. But okay. um, that's that's kind of how we see that. Okay, that makes sense. Is that? Sorry. No, I was just going to say this is a different color just to highlight. It's it's an anchor. You can see right. That one. That makes sense. Yep. Just as a point of order, and I know it's this is intended to be a, a sort of less formal workshop format, but before we get into any further board discussion, we should probably provide the opportunity for public comment. Oh, partly sorry. because the extent there is any, we want to you know run that through the through the board. So, Dan, are you? Have you covered everything presentation wise? Yeah, the only final piece, and I'll just wrap it up, and then you can turn to the public, is to outline process. And this, and this slide shows that. Um, we talked about it a bit already, where tonight we're looking at the master plan. We'll come back at a future meeting, a future meeting and review the design and the space and bulk standards and, and seek a master plan approval when, when appropriate. Um, and that sets really the kind of the zoning and the framework for subdivision permitting. So um, we're 
beginning to prepare for kind of the DEP process, and tonight's important uh, in terms of getting guidance on the design, so we can continue to, to think about the DEP process, but those things will come. So DEP will occur, subdivision, um, and the typical permitting process that you usually, um, usually manage. Yeah, Dan, I, yeah. I, in the, the commercial or retail um, anchor, there's no division in that lot the way you have the, the rest of the, is that just one giant lot or, or what? What are you thinking about As there? As of right now, we're anticipating this is one large 20 acre lot. Uh, it really depends on what comes forward in terms of development. It could stay one large lot and there could be one or more buildings that are on it. Um, as individual pad sites or, or leases, or it can be further divided into a number of uh, smaller lots. So, but, but you're, you're not, know. you're not basically, you're not there yet. We're not there yet. Okay. Yeah, but it's large enough to, to be flexible in that way. Thanks. With that, I will open it up to any public comment. Anyone? I think they're all right. done. Okay, just want to make sure I didn't want, didn't want to assume <laughs> any members of the public. Yeah. Uh, we're all members of the public. Well, that's true. Um, so let's continue the discussion then. And uh, Roger, do you have anything? Um, I, um, I really don't have too much. Just a couple of uh, clarifications. Um, in, the, um, in the packet, you referred to the retail as destination retail. What is your definition of destination retail? I, I see that as like a Cabela's. People come from all around to go to a Cabela's, you know? Is that just a terminology used in development? You're referring to the quarter run? Yeah, anything. It's in, it's in your thing, mm -hmm. in your packet. Is that? It's the type of use that people will drive to it to, to get there. You know, okay. It's drawing from more than just the neighborhood. Okay, all right. We see it as a commercial anchor. Um, Drawing from the neighborhood, from the town, from the region. I, I, I know you've also discussed uh, potential like a grocery store. So do you see that there or more or less down in the, in the core area? A grocery would fit there. Yeah, okay. It would fit. I, yeah. Am I reading your mind? <laughs> um, Take it for what it's worth. Let's see, how do you do that? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I... I, 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 I I think it looks pretty good. I don't have any further questions. Okay, thanks. <laughs> I think, um, again, well thought out, and I see the value and the flexibility. And, and um, there's not a whole lot. I mean, anything I would add or suggest would probably just be my preference over somebody else's preference. So, I mean, from what I can see that is being proposed, it really is. Um, I, I really do like the flexibility, I like the layout. Um, I had one little bit of two cents to add is that bottom T, that, you know, the one that actually goes down the first one. Um, yeah, I would. Yeah. She just passed this to her <laughs> turn. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. Right yeah. right this right there. Um, you know, when I when I look at um, how that's laid out, and I know this is completely conceptual at this point, but you know what I would fear seeing happen is this is a beautifully laid out road you have it's got the island it's, it's something you want to walk down bike down drive down and then there's a potential for a light industrial client right there and where a potential curb cut might come into what would be the start of where you're beginning this island I would hate to you know kind of see that whole vibe ruined by a light truck you know commercial traffic going right into what seems to be a nice gateway into what you're moving into more of a residential retail type of area of your property. So, um, you know, but like I said, this is a preference thing and it's completely conceptual. This could probably snake around all, you know, it could be a big circle around that wetland or it can go right over it. But just a thought, you know, if somebody purchased this lot, are we getting a curb cut into this really nice area of road? And, and that, that's all I really have. I'd like the talking stick next. <laughs> Rachel, do you have anything else? I don't think probably don't need this. Um, yeah, I like the flexibility there. Uh, I like the the way it's going. Um, I I guess one of the things I would ask that you keep in mind 
uh, as this goes along is that um, you have the potential on these lots for solar orientation because there is pretty much a heavy, uh, not, not purely south-facing area, but um, there is south-facing possibilities there. And if this is going to be an innovation park, then um, the ability for people to build with, uh, with solar power and solar energy in mind becomes important uh, down, down the line, certainly. One of the, a couple of the other things that are allowable in here that I'd appreciate it if you keep in mind as you go along, uh, you've talked about um, the potential for live work. Uh, if not here, <coughs> then perhaps at, the, um, uh, at, at, at a later time at a town center. Uh, something that's really um, of interest to the newer, the younger generation, it would drive me crazy, but I have, uh, know a lot of folks who, who use it, it's co-working space uh, as um, the sort of office. Now, to me, some of these smaller lots, especially ones buffered by a lot of trees, become very attractive as co-working space uh, for the millennials that, that we hope to attract to town and for the young people that we hope to keep there. Another thing, since this is Innovation Way, that would be helpful, I think, for you to think about in terms of potential tenants would be incubator space. Uh, the food fork, I think, has closed down uh, or was on its way out. But when it was originally um, envisioned in Portland, uh, it started a lot of businesses. Uh, and they, because I was one of the uh, original Kickstarter folks. Um, I'm familiar with some of what goes on there. A lot of the folks at the, um, the food fork, when they went to the, the next generation of their business, were looking for places to move that next generation in an area where there was support, where it's not just them alone all of a sudden with their own manufacturing area. Uh, so. Perhaps this is, this is marketing or a way to think of it, but as you look at some of these areas, think about looking at a space and clustering some of these inno innovative businesses that will and can develop here in Scarborough. Um, Gelato Fiasco, I read today, has moved its uh, manufacturing, most of it, to Michigan because it couldn't find a space here. Uh, if I were you, I'd call them up <laughs> and suggest that you got something going, because that's a, <clears throat> that's a good, that's a really good business. Um, a couple of other things that I would uh, ask you to just think about as you go along: the stormwater ponds. I I don't have the uh, I don't have the knowledge that my colleague uh, Ms. Saunders has. Um, but I recall when you initially started talking about this area and you talked about ponds and with fountains in them and a few other things, think about them, if it's possible, as also additions to the recreation area. Uh, you're going to have a lot of families moving in there. Can you stock the largest one with bluegills and have a fishing derby? I mean, think about how you can use some of these amenities really to integrate with the rest of the community. And I think that's probably it. I'm sure I'll have more to say later. Um, Dan, you, you keep talking about uh, uh, the new industrial look. You know, we talked, uh, could you define that as opposed to the traditional in terms of architecture or what you, what you mean? I, it, when you talk about light industrial development, that there are new, mm -hmm. um, new techniques, new materials, whatever. Could you give me a little sense of what? Yeah, well, I mean, we're what we're it helps we're still because that we'll out. know yeah. we'll know then who you're looking for. I think. I think one of the things, if I can jump in, yeah. one of the things that we're thinking about with this, the way we've laid this out, it's not, and I, I take the the industrial park that we're in right down here, the Scarborough Industrial Park behind the Holy Donut. That was, you know, that was a 70s, 80s idea of what an industrial park ought to look like. And it works. There's some heavy users in there, but everybody's like on their own little island, right? There's no, 
no shared anything with our neighbors down there. Um, I do see people walk on that road, uh, which actually is a hazard. It's a nice wide road. It's about a 70 mile an hour road in front of our place. Um, we want to try to avoid that. We want to try to have these lots that they actually have some meaning to each other, if you will. Um, so that's, that's what I think, a big part of it, um, the interconnectivity, the buildings and what they look like. I haven't got that all figured out yet. We know we, know we want it to be attractive. We know we're going to have to have big metal buildings, but they can have some architectural features that would make them uh, more attractive. There's okay. a lot of good examples in the southeast. Yeah. And that's where we're looking. I was just trying to see if I could find anything real quick. I just think you. about where we are right now at 6 Washington Avenue. We've got a nice building, it's, but it's a metal building, and it's not the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. We've got about a two-acre lot there. We're really only using about an acre of it. And that's a 13,000-square-foot building with uh, about 4,500 million of, of uh, office space within. <clears throat> um, so it's a pretty good-sized building. Um, that will fit on one of the small squares. Mm -hmm. So when you you know you're looking at this scale and you're thinking, oh gee, you get all these little these little lots. Well, you can you can it, it's usable. But I think the way we've got this laid out, the buildings can kind of mean something to each other and, and yeah, we're working thinking, together, if you will. And and, and 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 I appreciate that because I think this is this is different. I think what's going to make it is the mix of businesses that go in mm -hmm. that work off of each other. Mm -hmm. that develop that relationship off of each other um, between the co-working and incubator yep. and that sort of that. stuff. I think uh, a concentrated effort to bring groups together, bring businesses together becomes very attractive, especially for newer and growth-oriented uh, businesses mm -hmm. that really want to, you know, that need a little extra help um, but ultimately are going to really bring something here to Scarborough, keep our kids here. Mm -hmm. It's interesting what you say, this one with just an idea here, with, it's got hospitality, office buildings, residential developments, it's got youth parks, um, water theme concepts, all right here, what you are just talking about. So they're, they're out there, they're certainly not in Maine um, mm -hmm. at this point. But we're looking around somewhere that is um, weather friendly to us, meaning, you know, we can't build something like a big wooden cord or something, or so and so on. But we'll, we'll, conceptually, it's out there. We might be able to point to something here in the next couple months, perhaps, that we could, we could show. Flexibility is the key, though. With our energy sources, are you looking at geothermal or anything like that? I don't think we've gotten that far. We haven't, we haven't gotten that far. Okay. I mean, does that make sense to consider it? In some instances, it, it does. We've done some commercial hospital buildings. Hospital is looking at doing that. It's user-driven, typically, yeah. on, you know, how they how they want to. It's definitely getting more affordable. Mm -hmm. um, it's been, it's more affordable, but it's still more of an upfront cost, typically. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So it's, you know, it's, it's user-driven. If they think they're going to be there a while and there's a cost-benefit, then, then they're interested in it. We've done a bunch of geothermal uh, work over the years on com it's usually commercial stuff. We did talk solar though, and in, in, mm -hmm. you know, trying to be able to. And Dan's had a meeting, and we've we've got yeah. a lot of information we need to. Yeah, we feel we need yeah. a process on that. Just for further time, just yeah. for clarification, um, primarily for the public, there's no there's no plans for residential any residential in this area. Is that correct? Within. This district, this innovation yeah. district, we don't have any specific plans today. It, it is an allowed use, okay. um, but we don't have any plans in that area. We see a transition area further down, yeah. um, but I think the answer is that it is. I, I, I know in all the parts of, of the project, you have, you have talked about you know, retail with some. Mm -hmm. In the town center area that we've yeah. talked about, we've we definitely. Yeah. Uh, I just want to that. clarify it as as it is right now. It's not envisioned to be any Correct. residential in that area. No, maybe yes, I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, and I would ask as you go along that you keep uh, the craftsmen in mind. Um, so many of our small businesses are are craftsmen, uh, and. You know, ultimately a facility that houses the, the workshops, a series of workshops 
That means finding somebody that's willing to, to, to do that and rent out the workshops. And, but uh, given the number of individual entrepreneurs in Scarborough and around Maine, uh, having an ability to have a place for our, our craftsmen and a place for them to sell, that becomes in and of itself a destination. Mm -hmm. To your point about the incubator, incubator in food, and incubator in trade, it's all, you know, these smaller shops and a place to go. It's across many different industries. And I think there is a spot here we've talked about for those incubator type businesses that have, what is it, Rocky, 1,500 square feet of... Yeah, we've, we've seen a gentleman where they have a couple thousand square feet, might have a small office in the corner, they get a bathroom and a place where they could pull a vehicle in or they could work, they could build something. They could, again, your craftsmen, your uh, small shops that that eventually build bigger businesses and need more space. That's realistic here, for sure. Yeah, I'm definitely thinking about that. And I don't know if we touched on it, but I mean, our, our thought is that, you know, some of this stuff is going to get sold and other people will build buildings. Some of it will retain and do build the suits. Um, we're really trying to leave ourselves some flexibility here that, so that we can meet really any market demand uh, that might be out there. We want to attract the ones that pay the rent. Right. <laughs> that we are interested in. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Are you planning to get most of your utilities from uh, the parkway or from the business enterprise? Most of it has to come from, yeah, uh, I apologize if we weren't clear about that, but there's really out in, in uh, the pain road, we have water. Mm -hmm. We have good water main out there. We really don't have a lot more than that. We've got power, um, but sewer, you know, gas, fiber optics, all of those important items are going to come from Highest Parkway. Um, and it's a little bit actually off, off yeah. the plan that Dan's got up here. But as it, you see, as it starts to yeah. turn when it comes to the bottom, yeah. it's headed for the parkway. Um, yeah, that master plan really is the best one to, to talk from. Have you assigned a name oh, uh, to that to that road right there? We have not yet. Okay. We have not uh, come up with a name for that yet. But. You know, bringing those utilities from the parkway really starts to open up. Yeah. I mean, it's a burden, but it also opens up other areas of the project that we can then start to move forward with We're planning on that. Do you have anything else? Yeah. So, Rocky, timing-wise, um, is that, is, that um, is this residential going to be built out before the industrial? You know, do you know? Is the abutting residential? You mean? Yeah, because you said there's a hundred foot buffer right here, basically. There's a hundred foot buffer there. Yeah, it looks nice. I just so, wondering, is this going to be built? So people... right, you're going to share this with me now. Ah. Bring so, <laughs> there's a parcel of land right in here, about 15 acres in size, that abuts us, that is um, not part of that subdivision. That's in a different ownership. Those folks are out of state. So, we have, you know, Mark O'Leary's project really is down here. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't abut us here, so we're not a direct abutter to Mark's project. Okay. I know he's he's come to the planning board at one point. I don't really know where he is on his project, but he's we don't. <laughs> hey, there he is right there. You can see him. <laughs> so we uh, you coming soon? Okay. So we don't abut here, but we maintain because this is residential. We have a hundred foot buffer, so we've got a hundred foot buffer in here, and then Warren Woods. Although it's open space, it's all zoned residential. So we have a 100-foot buffer along the Warren Woods. Piece. But there's no, there's no structures to the east of that road. There are no structures to the east of that that's road at this point in time. That's, that's owned by chunk of Warren that, Woods. This land, land trust land. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They've so, got 165 acres out there, something like that. Sure, kinda, we'll go with that number. Kind of so wraps around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I was just curious if that was residential, if, if um, how it was going to, I got to it. Okay. Um, and then, is it, I, I think that's mostly flat out there, right? But you've got the retention pond down in the corner. Is that, is that um, pipe to that pond, or is it just, is it going to kind of flow that way? Or so, so um uh, Piping mostly, but what we've tried to do is accommodate. We've got a pond here. I think we've got one here. We've got some bigger ponds, you know, one bigger okay. one up in here. So we're trying to get it to split 
you know, the further you got to pipe it, the higher you got to raise the grade to make it run. Right. We're trying to be sensitive to that. So we've tried to come up with areas where we can shed, yeah. you know, shed off. And, and we've tried to size everything as best we can in the anticipation of what's coming. Now, that's not to say that some user might need additional, more than what we had talked right. about or planned for, and maybe they've got to have some under pocket lot storage or mm -hmm. some other accommodation. But we tried to, you know, tried to place 10 to 15,000 square foot buildings on each of these lots and figure out the storm drain need mm -hmm. for each of those. So mm -hmm. we, we probably have got it covered. But then right. obviously as we come through the process on an individual basis. We'll right. Yeah, no, that's fine. But the plan is to have multiple multiple, points, multiple yes. ponds so you don't have to lift the grade so high. Correct. Right. Okay. Well, that the makes ponds sense. are I located just... to correspond with the phases. So the initial phase that would go halfway across the plan would go to the largest pond. Yeah. And then with the next phase that would be designed to be directed to the next pond. Okay. And then the final pond would be the one in the lower right corner, which would serve the final, say, quarter of the plan you're looking at. So it's okay. the ponds are organized based on phasing the All right. So break it so that we can we can do it in pieces. All right. That makes sense. Um, are you going to have m one pump station, or is that phased into like as the as the tenants come, you're going to have? <coughs> Apologize, we don't have a full plan. If we could turn and look at that screen, because it's the only one I can use the pointer on, we envision that there'll be a public pump station somewhere right in here. And everything and from the industrial. It'll, serve, pump, it'll, it'll the whole be thing. you know initially put in to serve this. Yeah. But it will serve everything okay. within here. Phase one, as, as you know, or, or may or may not remember, the sewer for phase one comes out of Enterprise, mm -hmm. and it's all gravity. Yeah. But as we get up in here, it's going to have to be pumped back to Highness. Okay. So it only makes sense to have one large, it would be a Scarborough Sanitary District specification. They would own it in the end, and it'll handle the, pretty much the whole project. Okay. All right, that makes sense. Um, yeah, and I guess that's um, all I have. You know what? I probably should know this from the master plan, but the, the closest uh, fire station is probably our new building, right? Mm -hmm. So is there any, there's no plans to have a fire, any sort of municipal buildings in the downs, is there? Not at this point. Okay. There's been no discussion about that. Yeah, no, and, and, and I don't see where you need it right away. It's just, a, I guess it matters, you know, how, how successful you are with the whole thing. So, which I hope you are. Hoping you fire station. We have to. All right. Um, yeah, that's all I have. I, I don't care to hear myself talk. Other than that. Thanks, Rick. Well, speaking of the fire department, to, and, and I'm knowing, obviously, that this is very conceptual at this stage, have you factored in or had any discussions with um, DPW or the fire department about access and circulation, given, particularly given sort of the dead end nature of the... In our preliminary meeting with staff, which included Angela, town engineer, um, we talked about secondary access, um, given, you know, planning on phasing this and, um, you know, get to a certain length of dead end road, we need a second way in. And so the way <clears throat> we anticipate that happening is, um, this is an existing drop that goes down and serves the you know, paddocks and the stables for uh, the downs. This is the primary downs road. So this is all paved today. And then with the extension of the of the sewer, the rock we was explaining, the sewer line is going to come up here in, in time for the project. This can be pro provided in the, in the short term as a secondary access to uh, to a kind of fire department to a kind of about like dead end road. Um, and we anticipate that's temporary. You know, and then this road is going to next days and it'll be a permanent street. A permanent yeah, that's a helpful road. reminder actually yeah. that does ultimately connect. So from a phasing standpoint, this section of road would be updated really to about here. And then this new road built to a logical ending point. You know, it could be here, it could be here based on demand for these lots. Um, but in the shorter term, you know, these roads aren't going to be immediately 
until there's development further down, um, closer to Heidi's Parkway. So this will be built to, to town standards and, and for planning board review. But this surface will still be here for, for access. So did he answer your question, or were you actually talking about the way these roads come in? I wonder if that uh, was part of it. Because not so much. As we come down the road. That was you know, a, we, a secondary question, I yeah, guess. Yeah, we stop, you know, there's your back around. Now, the, the fire department wants to have a couple, they want a couple access points to a building. So that will come into play as we, as we finish out these lots. Mm -hmm. You know, here's a given. You know, there's a given. And then what else are we going to have to do to accommodate? But that'll mm -hmm. be... You know, at the, the site plan level, right. we'll, we'll figure that piece out. But uh, yeah. well, I think the yeah. size of the roads that we're proposing all will handle, you know, handle their equipment, right. and you know, they've got to have their their access, which we right. used. Well, as you reminded us too, I mean, the, we have to keep keep reminding ourselves of the scale here. There is a tendency when you look at this to think, <clears> oh, this, <throat> this tiny little oh, gee, stubs tiny, yeah. coming off. Uh, but that's that's helpful to hear. Um, so yeah, I don't think I really have any other questions per se on that. I <laughs> maybe this shows where my eyesight is, but when I initially was looking at the infrastructure plan, I circled what I thought was swim area. And yes, not swim. Well, stormwater yeah. management. Stormwater <laughs> management. Well, that's an interesting concept. Come on, come on, all courts would be nice. I do think, I, and I do agree with Rachel that as you, and again, this is further down the road, but um, to the extent that one or more of those can be made available as amenities, obviously they're all the usual um, you know, risk factors that you, risk and liability factors that you have to take into account, but um, particularly, you know, maybe one of, one of the ponds that is near where you may end up with some parking mm -hmm. um, for trail access, it's just something to, to, to keep in mind. Um, but as far as you know, where what we're focusing on right now, uh, which is this sort of conceptual master plan, I think I share what I'm pretty confident with my colleagues' general comfort with what you've shown us tonight. Um, I think we understand and appreciate the, the flexibility and the need for flexibility, uh, given where you are and, and what your what your approach is here and what your product is, so to speak, um, and the fact that it's you know that it's sort of it's intended to be kind of scalable and modular in a way that some, some lots that you're showing here might end up getting consolidated based on what, you know, where the interest is. So it's helpful to hear that thought process articulated and understand that it's all been thought through um, and definitely a helpful, helpful presentation. I appreciate also the ex explanation about the, the, the piece that's to be added. And as you noted, those will be we'll be hearing more about that in a week or so. Um, the planning board. Um, you mentioned it. You, know, you had mentioned that you've had some discussions with the, the land trust about mm -hmm. connectivity. So that mm -hmm. that's, we're continuing. That's that. a real thing. Okay. Good. Yeah, we provided the, the latest master plan Great. as well. We had okay. a meeting in the spring to talk about the project in this area in particular. Now, you know, I'd echo and agree with staff's comment about consideration of cross easements or whatever the instrument might be for allowing for potential connectivity between uh, parcels. Um, you know, obviously, it's not the sort of connectivity that we think about with purely commercial areas on Route 1. You're not going to have a lot of through traffic, but to the extent that it provides some flexibility uh, among, among owners and users. That would be great, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I uh, there's there's really no action, formal action for us to take this evening, given that, as Dan pointed out, we still need to, to take a look at the proposed space, space and bulk standards, mm -hmm. and um, and I presume that you've you've read staff's initial suggestions on that, and we'll hear your your feedback on that and what your own thoughts are at a future session. But um, I think you know, we're generally happy with what we've seen so far. And you should let us know if there's any particular feedback that, that you were looking for that you haven't gotten. It's really to get feedback on the overall layout, uh, the things we talked about, the, yep. the flexibility, uh, 
with the lots and the configuration, but also get feedback specifically on the road alignments. You know, we've tried to minimize well and impacts. Um, we're, with Rich's help, um, working with DEP and Army Corps on that best road alignment so we can get to the light industrial area, uh, minimize well and impacts. Um, yeah, I did want to make note of that, that we definitely do appreciate that as always, the vo avoiding wetland impacts and, and I think the, the road alignment, the road overall layout, uh, overall road layout <coughs> does seem to make sense. So no, I think that we're looking for feedback on that layout and then we can go to that next step. Um, yeah. the space involved in the board. I felt like a couple bites at the apple yeah. would probably be a little easier to work through. Right, no, that's definitely, definitely appreciate it. Just, well, I was just going to, um, it seems to me, based on all your meetings and everything, that your, your effort's going to be to continue to develop the non-residential aspects of all the property first, other than the lower, you know, the first the <coughs> one. But after here, you're going to go out towards the parkway and, and try and develop most of that non-residential, and then eventually work your way into the residential and then into the core. Yeah. Is that a fair assumption? I would say that is the plan today. <clears throat> okay. We are going to need some help from the town council. Yeah. And uh, I think the biggest reason is that we showed you with the utilities of that. So if we can move forward in that manner, then this, this will be the next, the next phase. It's where we want to go. We know we have users. And so we've started this process. Uh, as you folks know, it takes some time to, to get approval. So. So we have a notice that just underneath here in uh, the Innovation Way area, light industrial, there's an area there for, it's like residential, future residential, but I'm assuming you're going to bypass that for the time being and then go down so towards the park. We're area. thinking about that area. I mean, I think it's shown on our overall master plan as more residential than anything, but we're thinking of that as an area where we can kind of phase in may not be all residential. Um, the, the light industrial use is restricted to that upper corner, yeah. but there are other uses that are available that are allowed in the crossroads like zone, more thing. business oriented, but maybe not manufacturing. Yeah. Maybe that kind of creeps in there. Um, as part of a, a biotech was one example. Biotech, if we had some user that needed uh, some of that kind of space, yeah. it, could, it could fit. So there's some flexibility there. Um, See more residential, more down towards the, the Route One end. Yeah. Okay. But that's this this phase that we're showing you now is where we want to go next. Sure. Anyone else? Okay. I guess the only question I would ask to the board is, um, we're going to come back for another master plan review. Do we want to do that in another workshop type setting such as this? Is that something the board would be amenable to? I think it would be something we've talked about in the past. I just want to bring it up again to be sure we're comfortable with the process um, so yeah I mean the devil's always in the details when it comes to the scheduling but I think as a as a general approach I think that still makes sense okay. yeah. it, it might make sense because our agenda is getting very full right mm -hmm. and <laughs> now we have we are we're we're back to having some pretty yeah. pretty full agendas we're we're having to table folks due to time mm -hmm. so I, I do think that makes sense yeah. All right. Great. With that, then I will move to adjourn. All, All in favor? Thank you. Thank you very much.